Hello everybody, in today's project we're going to learn how to make Quizlet in Python. For those of you that don't know, Quizlet is a very popular website that allows you to create flashcards which you can then study, quiz yourself on, and play some fun games with. We're going to be making a simpler version of this app as a terminal based project. So to get started, let's go over how it works. On the application start, we will load flashcards from our text file and present certain menu options. The menu options will be allowing you to add or update a flashcard, delete a flashcard, save the flashcards to a text file, and then choosing between two game modes. One will be allowing you to study flashcards, and the other game mode will be allowing you to be quizzed on flashcards. And let's take a look at the text file that you guys will need to create. It'll have a certain number of words, and make sure you at least have more than four words. Preferably, the bigger the list, the more realistic it'll be. And in my case, I just fill this with six words. So with that out of the way, let's get over some of the overview. So I've created the empty stub methods, and you can find the code down below in the description for this class. This is going to be all the methods that we will be implementing later. And to quickly go over them, our first and only global variable this time will be a dictionary to keep track of the flashcards. Up till now, the projects only used arrays, which are lists in Pythons, and also just some strings and some booleans. But now we're adding in another data type, which will be the dictionary or hash map. This allows you to store key value pairs. And as you guessed, a flashcard is really nothing more than a key value pair with the name of the card being equal to the definition of the card, which is why everything is separated from the key equals definition or value. Now the first method, read flashcards from text file. This will do just as it says, we're going to be loading in this text file, flashcards.txt, and it'll read it line by line. It'll parse it and separate it by the equal sign. So the left side will be the key and the right side will be the value that goes inside the hash map. The method after that, update flashcards will be called whenever you are adding a flashcard, overwriting a flashcard, or deleting a flashcard. It has certain parameters which are the key and the value for the flashcard, and then some optional parameters such as do you want to save it to the file or do you want to delete it. Now write flashcards to text file, this method will be called to allow us to overwrite our text file with all the new values for the hash map. So every time this method is called, the old file gets completely wiped or replaced with only what's in the new card. So it does not append or combine two versions of flashcards together. After that, our add flashcard, this is what gets called from the main menu and it'll take in the inputs that we need to create a flashcard, such as the name and the definition and whether or not it needs to be saved. And it'll call the update flashcards that we did before. Remove flashcard, same thing. It'll be called from the main menu. It'll use update flashcard to actually delete the flashcard. And then study flashcards is one of our game modes. It'll allow us to have the key and the value, which is the name of the card and the definition, and just let you press enter to move between flashcards to memorize them. Now our get valid int input, this will allow us to return a number one through four or negative one to exit the program. We will be using this in one of our quiz game modes, which will allow us to choose one of the correct definitions for the flashcard. Get random choices. This will be, again, for the take quiz method down below, where in the quiz mode, for every word, it's going to show four possible definitions, and this will just shuffle them around so it's a randomly sorted list. Take quiz. This actually launches the quiz mode from our main menu. And this will use all the methods above to allow us to show a word and four different definitions for it and allow the user to choose between one of those definitions. Print menu just simply prints these menu options that the user can choose between. And get valid menu input allows us to choose a number one through six that corresponds to the menu options above. And finally, the main method is just going to be the entry point that ties together the rest of the application. So at this point in the video, you guys can pause, get this file, try creating Quizlet yourself, and then we'll move on to see how I implemented it as the solution. So over here in the first method, we can see that to read from the file, we do with open, I pass in my relative path for the name of the file, 
and I pass in this R, which allows it to be read as read mode. And then for every line in the file, I simply strip the line for any sp extra spaces at the end. I split it based on this equal sign. So when I split it on the equal sign, we end up with the left side, which is minute, and the right side, which is the definition, infinitely or immeasurably small. And then from there, I say zero through the split index, or in this case, we're getting the index of the equal sign, which I'm then using in the substring to actually split it. So zero through that index, which will give us the card name. And I strip that for any spaces in case it's uh, minute space equals. And then same thing from here, I do another substring that allows us to go from one past the equal sign. So the start of the definition up until the end of the line. So the end of the definition and I strip it for spaces. And now I have my key and my value to store in my flashcards. And just a check that we do, the length of the flashcards, you have to have at least four flashcards. And if you don't, it's going to throw an error and then just do sys.exit, which will just quit the program as is. So make sure before running this, you have at least four flashcards, but preferably 10, 20, 30, or even more. Now our update flashcards method, this we take in the parameter, do we want to delete the flashcard? If we want to delete it, we're going to just delete it based on its key that deletes the key and the value from the hash map or else we're going to just add it into our map. And once it's in the dictionary, notice I'm going between dictionary and hash map. They both mean the same thing. Python calls it a dictionary. Other languages like Java call it a hash map. And then if it's either deleted or added, next we check, do we want to save to the file? So this new flashcards that we have that either has an extra value or got removed a value, do we want to overwrite our text file with this new set? If it's true, we go ahead and do that. And then this method allows us to actually write our flashcards to the file. But before writing, it'll always check to make sure that you're at least writing four cards. If not, then it's not going to let you and it'll just return. So you have to add more cards before it allows you to write. And the way that it writes is just by opening it in W plus. What this mode does versus the R that we saw above is that it'll always overwrite the file and start it from fresh. So whenever we save our flashcards, we're basically creating a new text file. So it won't have any of the old stuff that was in it before. And then this way of iterating for key comma value in flashcards.items, it allows us to get the tuple, which is what is the key value pair, destructure it into these variables and just simply write it as a line where we say key equals value and we have to add a backslash n to move on to the next line. And then with our def add flashcard, we take in three inputs, the card name, the definition, and do we want to save it to file? And then if we want to, if uh, we want to save it to file, if they put in a capital Y or lowercase y, it won't matter because we get rid of the case sensitivity, case case sensitivity. And then we either save it to true or false. And we call our update flashcards method that we did above by passing in those variables. And here it's going to add our new flashcard into the hash map. Remove flashcard is very similar, except all we care about is the card name. The definition doesn't matter since we're deleting it based on the card name. And then save to file is the same logic as above, but I simplified it a bit. We lowercase the string is going to be lowercase y. And then we check to see if it's equal to lowercase y or some other letter. If it's equal, then this would be true. So we do want to save to file. If it's false, then it would be false. But this one line simplifies these five or six lines above. And then if the card name is not in flashcards, we print an error saying you can't really delete that card because it's not even in the flashcards. Else we just call our update flashcards with the same variables as above. But now we pass in this delete flashcard parameter as true. So for our first game mode, which is study flashcards, all we're doing is for every card and definition in the um, hash map or in the dictionary, we're printing out the card, the definition, and then every time we also checking whether or not they want to exit this game mode. And if they do, they would type Q and we're checking this similar to how we check the Y for the save to file above. But if they don't type Q and they just press enter, it's going to just keep iterating over all the cards so you can just go one definition at a time. 
Get valid int input is a simple uh, clean sanitization method that allows us to enter a number one through four or a Q to quit. And if they enter in the lowercase Q or capital Q, it wouldn't matter either one. Then the answer, we set it to negative one, which we will then use later on to know that they wanted to exit the program and or else it'll always be one through four. In our get random choices, we took in the answer and the definitions that are available to choose from. We start our array by making index zero into the answer. And while we only have four possible options, one, two, three, four. So we choose random definitions for the other ones. We check to see that each random definition we're choosing is not already inside of this list. And if it's not, we're appending it to the list. And once we have four answer choices to choose from for each thing in our quiz mode, we randomly shuffle the list and return it. In our take quiz mode, this is the main entrance of the take quiz, and it calls all the methods that we went over above. First, it makes sure that the length is at least four so you have enough cards to quiz with. By doing the dictionary.keys, this will be, and by wrapping it in a list, it'll make sure that this creates a list using all of the names of the cards and the same for definitions. So we have a list with, or an array with all of the names and another one with all of the definitions. We're randomly shuffling them, starting our score at zero. And then for every card name inside of our cards, we're going to see what is the definition for that card name. And then we generate four answer choices where at least one of the answer choices will be the correct definition for that card name. And we print out one through four. We have to add one to i here to offset it because i starts at zero in a loop traditionally. And same as here below, we have to offset this by negative one because we have an answer choice from one through four. Now here is when if in the get valid int input they typed q, it would return negative one. So negative one minus one is negative two. So we know that if answer was somehow negative two, that means they typed q or quit and they want to exit the game mode. So we just break out of the loop if that was the case. But if not, we check to see if the answer choice is equal to the actual definition of the word. If it is, they chose the correct answer. Their score goes up by one. We print, they got a point. Else we say the correct answer was, whatever the correct answer was. And then at the very end, after all of the loop is done, we would print the quiz is complete and your total score. And then after that, we have our print menu method, which all it does is print the different menu options. Same for get valid menu input. This is very similar from choosing options one through four, except this allows us to choose options one through six, and there's no way to quit out of it because option six represents the exit Quizlet method anyways. So we don't need to do that extra check there. And finally, in our main method, we wrap all of the code together by setting our random seed at the beginning based off the time you run the program. You start the application by reading all the flashcards from the file. We set our local run loop to be true. And while the loop is running, so while the game is playing, every time we print the menu, choose a valid option one through six, and based on whichever option it is, we call different methods, such as one for add flash, uh, two for remove flashcard, and so on. And if they exit the program, then we just say, thanks for using Quizlet. That's all in today's video, guys. This is a little bit more advanced because it uses a hash map or dictionary versus the previous projects. But in terms of complexity of the loops, I think it is a lot simpler than battleships, for example. So I hope you guys had fun making this. And just for a quick peek, let's take a look at how the program actually works. When we run it, we're presented with our options. And then we press number four. It shows you each card and definition that I can just keep iterating through. And if I wanted to be quizzed on them, I can enter options one through four. And it'll keep going until the end. And it keeps telling me that I got it wrong. So I got all of those wrong. Let me actually try to get one of those right. Um, this is the wrong mode. Five. So the definition for evident is clearly revealed to the mind or his senses of judgment. And it'll say plus one point. And for practice, it is a customary way, plus one point. And then I'm just going to quit out. And at the end, it'll tell you your score was two out of seven because I only did those two cards. Now, if you want to add a flash card, and let's say we'll do pizza, a delicious food. 
And when I want to study these, save to file. Yes, let's go ahead and save to file. So on that one alone, now that I've saved to file, you notice when we go back here, pizza is now added to the bottom of this file. And if we were to run it, we can, and we study flashcards, the very bottom, we have pizza as our definition now. So that's a quick rundown of Quizlet. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and see you again in the next one.